Hello everyone and you welcome back. In our last lesson we saw how we could install Plotly in a specified environment. We set that environment. So right now open up your uh, Anaconda Navigator and go back to the home menu and launch Jupyter Notebook. So I have my notebook launched. I have this empty notebook and I'm just going to save that and let's simply uh, begin. So the first thing we're going to do is to import Plotly. So I'm just going to say import Plotly. And if you run this without any errors, congrats, that means you've successfully installed it. If you run it and you run into problems, you can send me a message in the course or you can go ahead and look back in our video and see how we set it up so you can actually be on the same page. Now, another quick way to check out the directory on the Plotly module is type dir and say help and then let's say Plotly. This should bring out a help menu that contains information about that uh, module. So but let's go ahead and move on. So the next thing I also want to do is to import plotly.graph underscore objects or rather uh, plotly's graph objects. So the graph objects is used to design figures and visualize data. Basically that's your core plotly powerhouse for visualizing your data. So I'm simply going to just say import plotly dot graph underscore objects. as go which is the preferred convention i'm also going to import numpy as np because i like to get some uh, random data so we can visualize our data quickly now the next thing i'm going to also do is to create a figure object just like we create figures with the matplotlib and basically the figure is a data structure for charts plots you know maps and diagrams so that's what the uh, figure object basically is for it's just a data structure that is used to describe how charts plots and figures work so let's go ahead and create an object called figure and i'll just set that to go dot figure so now that we've mapped these two uh, let's go ahead and just visualize the figure so if we just run this we should actually have an empty figure object without any uh, charts assigned to it. And then we can actually see, we can download this uh, image and we can zoom in, pan, minimize and maximize, and we can check, reset the axis once we've done these. So this is just a basic empty figure. So let's go ahead and add traces to this figure. So a trace basically provides specification for your data. I mean, basically how you want the data to appear, like how is it supposed to be plotted? What's going to be on the X axis or the Y axis? What kind of color? What is the name of the X axis? So basically that's what your trace is. You can think about your trace as data points and trace will specify how to connect those points. So to do that, let's go ahead and simply add a uh, trace right here for the figure we just uh, created right above. So right now, I'm just gonna say figure dot add underscore trace. And then we'll add in a go dot scatter because we want to see a scatter plot. Now that we've created that scatter, let's set the X value to be a list of three integers. So I'll just say one, three and five and then comma for our y value let's also pass in a list of three integers so i'm just going to pass in four five and two so let's just simply run that figure and now you can see we have a uh, line plot with those figures a cool thing about plotly is that it's interactive so if i just point my cursor over my cursor uh, take my cursor over a point it's going to show me those reference uh, points right there and like i said we can actually zoom in on that point or we could zoom out on the point and if we want to reset we could just go down here now where is it to reset the axis so we can go back to our default chart let's go ahead and add another uh, trace right here so i'll just copy this line and i'll just paste that line underneath and let's change this to say uh let's say four oops four two and uh, one and also let's change this to a three and let's set this to seven and let's go ahead and run it right now. So you can see we have two traces right here on this figure object. And notice one thing, it's giving a default name for the trace. So how can we change that property, right? How can we change this uh, property? And let's go ahead and see another uh, example. So right now I'm just gonna say figure equals go dot figure and I'm going to create a value called X 
and set that to np dot a range and I'll set that to a value of say five. So now that I have that, let's go ahead and add a trace to a figure. So I'm just going to say fig dot add underscore trace and we'll do our scatter plot. So I'll say go dot scatter. And right now I'm going to set my X to be equal to the X, which is going to pass in the value of the uh, NP dot a range. And for my Y values, I'm just going to say NP dot sign of X raised to the power of two, just like that. And once we have that, let's just run this and see. So you can see we have this kind of like sawtooth uh, shape based on this uh, plot. So let's go ahead and add another uh, scatter plot like that. So let's just go ahead and copy this line and we'll just uh, paste that and let's change our uh, properties. So for this scatter, for my X values, I'm just going to set a list of values. So I'll just say, uh, let's say one comma four five and then I'll set a uh, four, two and one. Now remember when we did the A range is going to bring out a list of five elements with index zero. So that's going to be six elements. So if I'm going to create this trace and I want this trace to have six points also, I need to have at least six elements within my list. Also, I'm just going to change this to a cosine. So I'm just going to say cosine like that. So I can have these two traces. Let's just go ahead and run that and see. So now we have that sawtooth and then we have this cosine shape right here. So let's go ahead and see how we can customize this and add some uh, values to it. So I'll just drop these two points down because I want to add some extra arguments. So I'm going to use the keyword mode, which is a parameter of scatter. And I'm going to say, I want to see the lines plus markers. And what I also want to do is change the name of my shape because I know it has a sawtooth shape. So I'll just call that sawtooth, just like that. And I'll just go ahead and run this and see what we have here. So now we can see we've changed the name to sawtooth and it's showing lines and markers. So let's go ahead and see how we can add some extra functionality to this one and also change that. So I'll just pick these two elements we just created right now and I'll just get down here and just paste them. And so for our mode, I can actually go ahead and change the mode. I'll just set this to lines only. And then for the name, I'm just going to call it uh, red. So let's go ahead and run that. So now we can see we have a sawtooth with the lines and markers, but the red, I've gotten rid of the markers because I always specified lines without the markers. So another thing we can also do is to use the uh, figure.update layout, which will allow us to set a title. So let's go ahead, if I say figure.update underscore layout, I can pass in a title argument that accepts a string and I'll call that, uh, let's say sawtooth, whoops, versus lines. And the versus has a VS. So let's go ahead and just run that. So now we can see we have a title called sawtooth versus lines, and we can actually see this chart. So that's a basic uh, introduction to the uh, figure and uh, Plotly. There are a lot of things in Plotly, but this is a basic introduction to using uh, Plotly. In our next lesson, we'll actually look at Plotly Express and see how we could reduce the amount of lines we actually write to create our Plotly uh, charts. So once again, thank you very much. And I hope this gives you a basic uh, idea of what to expect when we're working with uh, Plotly. Remember, we can always check out more information on the Plotly documentation site and also read up a lot about the API package. See you in the next lesson, guys, and we'll move on.